In this how-to svelte, we're going to work on a typewriter effect. So if we go over to W3 Schools in their how-to section, you can look up typewriter. And the effect we're going after is just this. Now there isn't a lot of HTML on this and no CSS, so we'll just go ahead and grab what they have. We'll paste this in the typewriter sandbox, the Svelte REPL. I'm going to change this to an H1 tag so it's a little bit bigger. And we'll go ahead and put a string inside this H1 tag. And so this is the end result. This is what we're going after. So we'll take this out and store this in a variable, which we'll call phrase. Store it as a string. And the idea is that we want one letter at a time of this string to show up inside this h1 tag. So let's create another variable we'll call um, typed chars. We'll set that to an empty string. And we'll take type chars and use some svelte syntax. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill up this empty string with the letters inside phrase. So let's just try that. We'll do a test here. So phrase Every string is um, has indices and a length, so we can look at the letter on the first index, second. And so like this, we're going to keep adding strings, or adding single characters uh, to typed chars. So we can remove this. We'll put it back to an empty string. We'll also make a, an index, which we'll set to zero. And the function we'll make here will just do one small thing. It will literally just type one character. We're going to take typed chars and add one letter of phrase, and we'll use the index variable. To do that, let's just test this out. So we'll call type char and eight shows up. Okay, good. So then right now it's set to zero. We need to increment this by one each time this function is called. So we'll take index and we'll increment it by one. And then the next thing we need to do is in order to get the typewriter effect to get this to keep repeating itself until this whole string is done is we need to set up another function which we'll call typing. And we'll you need to use uh, JavaScript set interval, which will keep continue to call this function. We'll call it every one one hundredth of a second. So now let's go ahead and take this function, typing this new one, and we'll call that. And you can see the string will print it out. But unfortunately, it gets to a point where it's undefined because we run out of characters in this string. So we need to account for that. So in type char, let's put a condition here. Run that section of the code. Else, uh, we need to just stop typing. <laughs> and the way we stop typing is we need to get this function, this set interval, to stop. And the way we can do that is by setting up another variable, which we'll call typewriter. And we'll assign that to set interval. And now that set interval is assigned to typewriter, we can use the clear interval function that JavaScript offers to clear that, to basically stop the typing. So we'll call typing. It will continually call this function one time every one one hundredths of a second. And it'll keep doing it as long as index is less than the length of this string. Once index is equal to the length of that string, then it jumps down here and it'll clear this typewriter interval. Basically stop typing. So that's just the basics of getting a string to be typed out using a couple functions here. Let's go ahead and maybe add some graphics here. Oh, 
Okay, so we have a little background here, and we could go ahead and take that string that we created and type it out as if it were a headline of the newspaper. Now you can see we're calling this typing function, but we would probably just want to call this immediately when this component loads. So what we can do with Svelte is use their on mount lifecycle method. And what we'll do is we'll call on mount and the callback function will be to call typing. And so we get the same effect, but the idea is that when your website loads, maybe this is an effect that you'd want to have run immediately. So we can use this on mount lifecycle method. Just type, you know, just tuck in the typing function as your callback, and as soon as the component mounts, then it, the effect will happen. Now, another idea is if you come over to uh, W3Schools, you can find some websites, uh, templates that they have here, and you can play around with this typing effect. So, for example, you could just take the HTML of this site and copy it in one of the REPLs. Um, I, you know, I replaced the background with a picture, uh, and then what we could do is then have the h1 tag itself type itself out. We'll again use the on mount lifecycle method. Another thing you could do is you can bring in uh, some svelte transitions as well as easing and you could get some effects by taking the area that is typing the h1 tag, surround it by this at key and then you get this kind of, you know, strobe effect almost. You can play around that. You can play around with that, you know, maybe scale, maybe blur, maybe fly in and see which one, you know, suits your style and what you want to achieve. And so coming back to our sandbox, let's go ahead and replace this background image with uh, another image and replace the CSS gives us a piece of paper in the back now. And we'll take this H1 tag and turn it into a paragraph. I went ahead and imported a typewriter font called Special Elite from Google Fonts. And next thing we could do is we can go ahead and wrap our section inside some main tags. And what we'll do on this exercise is we'll add an input. So down here under the section tags, we'll add a form with an input. And so to give ourselves just a little bit more practice with Svelte syntax, we've added this input. And the idea is we'll take this input and bind its value to the variable we created up here called phrase. And now we can go ahead and get rid of this string that we initially started with because what we'll do is we'll paste a string inside here and then see it typing there. And then what we'll also do is we'll take, we'll add a button into this form element. And when the button's clicked, we'll use an on submit event listener to then call this function we've been calling called typing. So basically we removed the on mount. We can go ahead and get rid of this because we'll only type the string out when this button is clicked. So when this button is clicked, the event will bubble up to the form. On submit, we'll call typing, and then the string should type itself out. Let's see what happens. Okay, now this happened because we are calling an on submit, and we'll need to prevent default so that it doesn't actually submit something. It's gonna go ahead and refresh. So we'll go ahead and paste this 
string in there, click start, and then it types itself out. The other thing we'll get practice doing is adding another button. Let's say we actually wanted to pause this effect. And what we want to do is when this button is clicked, is we want to call a function that we'll make called stop typing. And stop typing can basically just do what we're doing here in the type char function. We want to just basically clear the interval. And so what we can do is instead of uh, clear interval, we'll call stop typing. Let's go ahead and give this button an ID. So now if we paste some text in, and click start. It doesn't work yet. And the reason it doesn't work yet is because we're calling an on click for a button that's inside a form element. So there's a couple things we want, want to do. We want to prevent default, but we also want to stop propagation. And now by adding these two, the typing will stop, then we can start it again, stop, start it again. Now the other thing I want to do is when we actually click start, we want to prevent clicking, we want to prevent the user from clicking start twice, because that will actually call the function twice. So why don't we figure out a way to disable this start button? So as soon as we click start, this should be disabled and not clickable anymore. And we can do that by creating let's create a, a variable called is typing we'll set it to false and our start button what we'll do is we'll disable it we'll set it to disabled if is typing is true so we have to set is typing true when we call type char so we'll set this to true, and then when the typing is stopped, we'll set it to false. Or even better yet, we'll put it down here in the stop typing function. And then what we did is we added some CSS here so that the button will change its appearance when it's disabled. So let's try that again. Grab some lorem ipsum. And see, now I can't click it anymore. I can stop, and as soon as I stop, as soon as I click stop, then what happens is is typing becomes false, and because it's false, then we no longer have this disabled attribute on this button element anymore. But if I click start again, then is typing is true. Now the disabled property is on the button. Now the last little extra thing we can add are some sound effects. So I've got a audio array. And let's make a function that will just play a single audio file. Make a variable called key sound effect. And we'll instantiate a new audio object. And let's just test this out. Then the next thing we need to do is take the variable and we'll call the play method. And then in order to hear it, we'll call it inside the type character function. So as soon as the letter appears, we'll hear the sound effect immediately after it. But it'll be so quickly that you won't know the difference. Now that's just using a single audio file from here. What we can do is, since we have three audio files, let's create a variable called random. And so this will pick a random number between 0 and 3, excluding 3. And what we could do is make another variable called URL. So this array typing sound effects, and we'll randomly pick an index number from that array. And then we'll use this variable inside the new audio object. Let's try that out.
The other thing we could do to kind of randomize things is we'll take the volume. And the volume can be set between 0 and 1. So let's just listen to what 0.1 sounds like. So it's very quiet. If I do 0.9. So what we'll do is we'll randomly pick a number between 0 and 1 just by using math.random because that's what it does. Stop it. Start it again. So that's how we can add an audio sound effect to the typing effect. Now the other thing I want to handle is this input. When I empty out this text, you notice that this section still has the text in it. So let's make a reactive, it's a svelte reactive statement. If this variable phrase is an empty string, or in other words, if it evaluates to false and empty strings evaluate to false, then we'll take the typed chars variable and we'll set it to an empty string. So phrase is more or less what we put inside the input and typed chars is what shows up here. So if we empty this out, we wanna empty this out as well. And then we'll also take the index and set it back to zero. So now if I put something in there and type, and then empty this out, then that gets emptied out as well. And that's how we can do a typewriter effect using Svelte.